Please get ready for a dictation of exercise number 13 from September 2021 issue of Progressive Magazine. 5 seconds. Start. In the judgment, it is seen that the Supreme Court held it is the distributor who can refer the matter to arbitration and not the respondent and as such set aside the judgment of the High Court appointing the arbitrator. The issue before the Supreme Court was not with regard to whether there is any arbitration clause but who can invoke the arbitration clause. This judgment is not applicable to the facts of this case. Having considered the judgments referred to by the learned counsel for the parties, this court is of the view that the issue in the case in hand is squarely covered by the judgment of the Supreme Court in the case of Indtel Technical Services Private Limited as followed in Everest One Elevator Guide Rail Manufacturing Company Limited. Inasmuch as from the perusal of Article 28 of the agreement, it is clear that the petitioner has an option either to get the disputes or claims or differences adjudicated through the jurisdiction of the court or by way of arbitration in accordance with the provisions of the Act of 1996. The fact that the petitioner has filed this petition it must be held that it intends to get the disputes settled through the process of arbitration. It is also not the case of the respondent. Either him or the petitioner had earlier invoked the jurisdiction of a civil court. I also find from subclass 2 of Article 28, the intention of the parties is to refer the disputes to the arbitrator with regard to any dispute concerning accounting matters and one of the claims of the petitioner is of non-payment of management fees which is an accounting issue. The objection raised by the learned counsel on the maintainability of the petition is liable to be rejected. The next issue which arises for consideration is whether the respondent has terminated the agreement during the lock-in period. To answer this issue, it is necessary to determine from which date the lock-in period has started or kicked in. According to the Learned Council, Article 26 of the agreement prescribes the term of agreement to be initially for 15 years starting from the opening date, renewable for another 10 years with the first five years of the said term to be mandatory lock-in period of five years which would thus commensurate with the starting of the term of 15 years. So according to him, the opening date being of July 2017, the mandatory five years lock-in period has started from July 2017. In effect, he argued 
that the effective date has not been defined in the definition clauses under schedule 1 according to him the word effective date mentioned in sub clause 3 of article 24 has to be necessarily read with earlier part of the same article that is first 5 years of the terms of the contract. Hence the effective date has to be read as the opening date since the term starts from the opening date. I am not in agreement with this submission made by Mr. Dutt. The date of the execution of the agreement that is May 15, 2015 has been defined as the effective date and subclause 3 of Article 24 stipulated the lock-in period to be 5 years from the effective date that is May 15, 2015. No doubt Schedule 1 of the agreement which defines words mentioned in the agreement includes opening date to mean the date of commencement of the operation of the hotel for the purpose of receiving guests to be determined in accordance with Article 4 of this contract, but the submission of learned counsel that the agreement prescribes two dates, that is effective date and opening date for the reason that since the hotel had to be constructed before being operational and the petitioner having the necessary expertise and in terms of recitals 3, 4, 5 and 6 read with Article 2 is required to provide professional advice regarding architecture, engineering, interior designing, furnishing, etc. from the effective date for which the petitioner was paid rupees 15 lakhs by the respondent for pre-opening services in consideration of the management fee promised to be paid by the owner is appealing. In substance, the plea of learned counsel is as certain obligations have been imposed on the petitioner to be performed during the construction of the hotel which started immediately and continued till the hotel became operational. The lock-in period was stipulated from the effective date. In fact, I find it is the case of the petitioner itself in para 19 of the petition that it had expended considerable time and resources in giving technical inputs, detailing and designing it put inputs which the petitioner has acquired over a period of time towards the construction and execution of works in the hotel. It is also stated by the petitioner that the petitioner's technical interest and experience in the field was one of the key factors in signing the agreement for letting the hotel to be managed by the appellant party in this petitioner case. Stop.